Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Coming up tonight in our news, the prime minister admits to breaking quarantine. The national security minister weighs in. Dubai trip criticism dismissed as political mischief. Millions in leases being canceled and Bahamans soar in Dubai. Welcome to Our News and thank you for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Top news tonight, free national movement leader Michael Pintard slamming Prime Minister Philip Davis following his admission that he broke quarantine before Christmas to visit a store owned by late businessman Leon Griffin. The national security minister was asked whether there would be a fine. Here's Berthony McDermott. While delivering remarks during the memorial of businessman Leon Griffin, Prime Minister Philip Davis made the bombshell revelation that when he was supposed to be in quarantine, he dropped by Griffin's store. In December, Davis revealed that he was in quarantine after his wife, Anne-Marie Davis, and other family members tested positive for COVID-19. The Prime Minister said once he left quarantine, he was surprised to meet Griffin inside the store. He said he thinks he was the last person Griffin saw in person. I was supposed to be in quarantine. <laughs> and I, and Christmas is there, you guys know. And I, and I had ordered my Christmas gifts. And he didn't pay for them. So I called the store and I said, look, I'm in quarantine. I need to pay for things, but I can't be seen out. And they said, well, what we do is when we close the store, we let you know when the store is empty and then you could come by. Sometime later, he said his aide received the all clear to pass by. He called the aide about 10 minutes after six to say, all clear. <laughs> come now. So I go down to Park Lane. He let me into the side door and went upstairs. Then, Store was empty. Griffin was murdered shortly after he parked in his driveway in Winton on December 23rd. The Prime Minister, who was fully vaccinated and received a booster shot, said he took multiple COVID-19 tests and all were negative. At the time, exposed individuals were required to quarantine for 14 days. Breaking quarantine is an offense that carries a fine of $500. Now we also put the issue to National Security Minister Wayne Monroe, who said he wasn't aware of the Prime Minister's comments. However, when asked if we could see the Prime Minister fine for breaking quarantine. Monroe said, as far as he's aware, police haven't been too strict with COVID violations. The police appear to be taking a position in the first instance, not to necessarily cite people, but to warn them, um, because necessarily moving to in, to um, penalizing persons isn't always the best way to control behavior. I think that if you look at their attitude across everyone, not just the Prime Minister, you wouldn't have seen the gusto, the appetite to just write, 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 write tickets that we saw previously. Monroe added that it's up to the police to decide if they will find the Prime Minister and stressed he doesn't interfere with their duties. If he is in fact admitted to doing that, then it's for the police to decide what they will do about it. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Well, Prime Minister Davis's public admission that he broke the COVID-19 quarantine law enacted by his own government is a betrayal of his oath to uphold the law, according to FNM leader Michael Pintard, who asserted that this irresponsible behavior undermines Davis and his government's moral authority to compel the public to follow the laws that he has willfully chosen to ignore. There must not be one law for the Bahamian citizen and another for the leader. Law-abiding citizens may justifiably ask whether this prime minister has the moral authority to lead the charge in the midst of this terrible pandemic. Well, Prime Minister Philip Davis on the defensive again following World Expo 2020 in Dubai. He called criticisms nothing more than political mischief and touted the many successes of the trip. Berthy McDermott reports. 
fresh off his trip to Expo 2020 in Dubai, Prime Minister Philip Davis summed up the backlash his government received as political mischief. He said it would have been perceived as ungrateful if the Bahamas didn't participate. You call it pushback. I just call it political, political mischief. And you, you, you would expect political mischief in these times, particularly when you're doing good. I mean, as the, old, as the anecdote goes now in the popular song goes, dogs in a park at a park car. This government is moving. <laughs> so I expect to hear box. The United Arab Emirates contributed $3.5 million for the event. Cabinet approved $1 million and the private sector invested 500000 And it would have been very ungrateful for us not to have participated, particularly after the host country invested near $4 million in building a pavilion and investing in on our behalf to ensure that we are I mean, we would have been, it would have been an ungrateful act on our part not to participate. The Davis administration came under fire over the size of the delegation, which included over 100 people and performers chosen to represent the country. The FNM has called for a detailed accounting of the trip. Uh, so I'm not surprised that you'll have the political um, spin on whatever we do. Economic Affairs Minister Michael Halkidis has committed to providing a full accounting of the trip in a few weeks. Davis said the trip was a successful one, adding he believes the best of the Bahamas was on display. We took the opportunity to speak to the government of the, of the United Arab Emirates, and we have entered into at least three memorandum of understanding. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, I left him there to, to wrap those up, and as soon as he's back, more, more, more will be made known of what, 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 we, what the other successes we have. But more particular success is that we introduce ourselves to the world. Um, many Bahamians went on their own, and they were surprised to appreciate that a lot of people don't know about the Bahamas. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthini McDermott. Emirates has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Public Service to explore joint initiatives to promote tourism to the Bahamas. The MOU was signed by the Emirates Group Chairman and Chief Executive and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Fred Mitchell. Through the MOU, Emirates will develop initiatives to promote the Bahamas as a tourism destination to customers across its global network, including developing enhanced connectivity to Lyndon Pinling International Airport from American gateways through its code share and interline partners. The airline is also making available to customers and its travel retail partners across its markets a range of travel packages including hotels and flights to the Bahamas. In other news, nearly $10 million in leases are being canceled by the government, according to State Minister for the Public Service, Pia glover Roll. She said it was money basically being thrown down a hole as government has been paying rent for buildings that weren't being occupied. Bad management. Um, in the last few years, um, three to four years, we have engagement of leases um, that are being paid to landlords and they're receiving um, payment for these leases and the buildings are empty. While well, a human resources audit across the public service is due to commence at the beginning of February, according to Glover Rowe. She said while there are no plans for downsizing, a full look at who is needed where is critical. Ensuring that we don't have an overabundance of unskilled or general service workers that aren't really on any specific pathway. It's a move Glover Rowe says was needed to determine which employees in each government ministry are effective in their roles and perhaps who is better suited elsewhere. There's a human resources audit coming across the public service and there will be no staff reduction. There will be st proper staff placement of um, our employees throughout the service. The audit is set to begin February 1st across the public service. The minister insists this doesn't mean layoffs or any right-sizing of the sort. However, she strongly stated that the impression that one can't be fired from a government role is wrong. The Employment Act speaks to progressive <coughs> discipline, verbal, three written, but we have to ensure that we are ensuring that the law is in place in terms of having our human resources units, ensuring that they're facilitating what the, what the act says. The concept that people think that they cannot be disengaged from the service is actually erroneous. The Employment Act speaks to how people are disengaged. The audit is part of a 10-point plan for the public service. There is currently a freeze on hiring within the public service, with only specific contract workers being brought on, in addition to those on the 52-week program. 
Then there are promotions. We are about three exercises behind in terms of promotional exercises and assessments. So that's the first order of business. Then we are going to look at identifying service-wide those persons that are due for promotion and understanding how we can move forward in you know, giving them the reward and recognition through promotion that they deserve and that they work for. Cloudy conditions continue tonight. Meteorologist Greg Thompson joins us with a first look at weather. Thanks, Kyle, and welcome everybody for your first look at weather on this beautiful Friday evening. Very warm conditions around the islands today. Temperatures managed to get into the 80s. We're now settling into the mid-70s, 75 outside our studios with just a few clouds. Your winds out of the south-southeast at five miles per hour and your feels like temperature very warm, 80 degrees. Satellite view, weak disturbance moved across South Florida and across the Grand Bahama area and the Abacos earlier today. Some showers and thunderstorms associated with that prompting the Department of Meteorology to issue some severe thunderstorm warnings for those areas. But we are watching a mass of clouds associated with the front boundary across the south portion of the United States moving into Florida. Should get near tomorrow, so we're looking at some increasing clouds as well as some showers and thunderstorms in the forecast for Saturday. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come, some employees facing pressure to get vaccinated. And the Hayman soar in Dubai. Find out more after this. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. You're watching Our News, welcome back. Mandatory vaccinations by employers remains a hot button issue as some workers face pressure to get the job. Tonight, the Director of Labor is explaining the rights of employees. Tonight, the Director of Labor, Robert Farkasing, is addressing the Health and Safety in the Workplace Act and how that relates to vaccinations. Now, the government has not made vaccinations mandatory. However, some employers have been pressuring or even forcing their employees to take the vaccination or face a termination. Farkasing explains how this dilemma works under the Health and Safety in the Workplace Act. If you are a presently employed, and part of your employment contract did not require you to be vaccinated, and the employer is forcing you to be vaccinated as a result thereof, in law it's called unilateral variation of contract. That's a term of your contract, and the employer should not be allowed to vary that term unless the employee agrees. Um, that will have to be determined either through the court system. So an employee who is terminated as a result of not being vaccinated um, has evidence, has a case to bring before the court for either wrongful dismissal and or unfair dismissal and breach of contract. So we expect those matters to come before the tribunal and or the Supreme Court in the very near future. As of January 15th, more than 157,000 people in the Bahamas were fully vaccinated. However, vaccine hesitancy lingers. Last April, a sushi restaurant defended a policy mandating that employees get the jab by the end of June 2021. Government officials have repeatedly said it is not mandatory for Bahamians to get vaccinated, although they have urged them to do so. Here's what Farkasin says job seekers should expect going forward. They can make a vaccination a part of their terms and conditions of employment. They either can take, take a job or do not take the job. Um, because of the labor market now, most employees are now taking their jobs and requiring themselves to be vaccinated. And so that's a question that's um, going through the system now. Uh, we know that in neighboring jurisdictions, particularly um, in the United States, the Supreme Court has ruled against the President of the United States that vaccinators are not mandated. They even use the issue of health and safety in the United States. So we expect our Supreme Court and our Court of Appeal to come to that decision in the very, very near future. He adds that there are some factors to consider as it relates to the Constitution as well. The Constitution guarantees um, certain rights as a, as, as human, as a human citizen. And um, forcing... Um, an employer for the purpose of employee to um, take his vaccination may be considered a discrimination issue. Reporting for Our News, I'm Megan Shepard. Well, the events of the past few days in Dubai have put a spotlight on that region like never before. 
One of the interesting things is the amount of Bahamans living there and the roles they play. Jerome Sawyer caught up with some Bahamans soaring to new heights there. It's not the kind of experience they could have imagined. These Bahamians who live in Dubai rushed in the Bahamas National Day Junkanoo Parade. It was a sense of national pride being all the way in the Middle East, representing my country here, um, bringing our culture and our beauty to the Middle East. Uh, for most of the people here experiencing this, this is the first time they've experienced it. Especially not being, being in Junkanoo for about, uh, being in Dubai now for about two and a half years. And finally participating in Junkanoo again, that was amazing and seeing everybody, you know, happy and having a good time and you know, just enjoying themselves. It was it was a wonderful experience. So even though they was lost, man, the people came running from the north, east, and the west. But that is, that's John Cano, man. For many others who lived there, it was just as exhilarating to watch it. I felt like I was home, actually. I really missed actually experiencing John Cano. So I've been here uh, three years, so I missed it. So what else do they have in common? All four of these Bahamians are pilots. The guys all fly for Emirates, one of the largest and most luxurious airlines in the world. Felton Benaby has four years on the job in Dubai. Dubai is, is first world, it's efficient, the people are friendly, it's warm, it's welcoming. Amir Lam has no regrets for applying for the job on the advice of a cousin already here. Very professional airline. They take very, very, very good care of you. You know, I mean, like, like I can't even explain, you know, provide us with living accommodation. You can pick up the two from work. Um, just amazing that I can just be on. For Tanico Darling, it's a chance to represent country. Being one of only five pilots here at Emirates, every time you go to work, you represent your country. Um, so getting to see the world, um, being responsible for these um, aircrafts and all these people's lives and being from a small nation and knowing that every time I step out and represent my country, I have a big responsibility on my shoulder. So it's, it's, it's a sense of pride. Lori Johnson has the distinction of being the first female Bahamian with Fly Dubai Airlines, a role, she says, that's treated with great respect. I'm happy to set the example and let other Bahamians know that they can do it as well. It's very empowering. It's not different. I, they treat me the same. It's, it's no differences or anything like that. Benaby is returning home soon. He's hoping the examples here can translate into better lives for his fellow Bahamians. Maybe, you know, if we can get some of the younger guys in there, uh, bring some innovation, some, some open-mindedness, and, and we could really take this thing to the next level. Because we can do it. We, 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 we're talented, naturally. Uh, we just need the discipline. Reporting for our news, I'm Jerome Sawyer. When our news returns, divorce applications increased in 2021 and the art of making a mocktail during dry January. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID 19 there. remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID 19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. This is our news. Welcome back. During the second year of the COVID-19 pandemic, more matters like divorces made their way through the court system. Jasmine Brown takes a look. The Judiciary of the Bahamas 2021 annual report has revealed the courts did not have as rough a year as 2020 when the first case of COVID-19 was confirmed and the Bahamas was subject to heavy restrictions. Chief Justice Sir Brian Marie. We have had, I think, considerable amount of success. The 152-page document showed that there was a slight uptick in civil matters. According to the report, there were approximately 1,813 new applications filed in 2021, compared to the 1,176 filed in 2020. Family registry matters were also up in all categories, as adoption, guardianship, and mental health applications saw slight increases. But it was divorces that saw the biggest jump from 570. 79 in 2020 to 709 in 2021. The Chief Justice says special focus will be placed on the family courts. We're going to be doing more work on, on, on integrating CAPS into the delivery of our services in our, in our magistrate's family court. 
As it relates to criminal matters, the 2021 report focused on bail management as it noted there was a decrease in applications made to the Supreme Court. It noted there is a marked reduction in the number of bail applications made to the Supreme Court since the power to grant bail for most criminal offenses was restored to the magistrates. The report also noted that virtual hearings are cited as a means for increased efficiency in 2021. The way in which we are doing business today is fundamentally different, and, and some of that was driven by the pandemic. I mean, we are, we are now conducting on the non-criminal side as much as probably 70 percent, 60, 70 percent of our work in the Supreme Court remotely. We're conducting hearings um, and civil trials remotely by Zoom and by WebEx. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. With dry January in full swing, we decided to check in with a top mixologist to perfect the art of making a mocktail. It's Agent Zero. Yeah, it dates back to James Bond, you understand ah. me? Just a drink. A martini, shaken, not stirred. And just like James Bond, our drink, Agent Zero, was set to be as smooth as they come. All natural, no alcohol, and very few calories. Our mixologist Derek Blackman says our mocktail would be pretty simple. A cocktail actually has alcohol in it, and a mocktail is just basically a virgin, a virgin drink, is as it, you would say. Is it just as good? Of course, it's just as good. Is, I have a mixture of pineapple and ginger that actually helps with the immune system, a daily dose of vitamin C, and helps fight the cold and common flu with this COVID as well too. So that's where the fight comes in with the Agent Zero. Within minutes, our drink shaken. Starting with, of course, the ice. With this, this is a home mixture mm -hmm. of pineapple and ginger juice. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't have my measurements right now. As I say, my the him is don't measure though. Good man. Top, pop yeah. the top on the Heineken Zero. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pour this in there. I mean, I need a little bit more, so I don't know if you want to pour. No man. Your discretion. And this is no alcohol at all. No alcohol at all. Okay, we may have let James Bond down a bit, because we did stir. I'm gonna take my spoon and just gonna give it a little friendly stir. I'm gonna give you all the stir as well, too. Top it off with a slice of pineapple, and we were done. Cheers. Cheers. Agent Zero and chocolate butter. I won't lie, it's good. It's good, I can taste right. the ginger. And with a few more days to go in dry January with no liquor, Michael and Munnings of Kamoa Brewery says it's not too late to get in on the challenge. They've gotten custom 00 dry January kits. So it's 32 bottles of beer in each kit. And one is for each day in January. And then the, the 32nd bottle is actually a bottle of Heineken original ah. that you can pop on February 1st to say, hey, <laughs> I, I made it. it through. <laughs> I made it through dry January, yes. What's the weather looking like this weekend? Greg has the answer right after this. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Welcome back to Our News. Partly cloudy conditions this week. Greg joins us for an extended look at weather. Thanks again, Kyle, and welcome back, everybody, for our second look at weather. We are watching a frontal boundary across the southern portion of the United States, pushing into Florida right now with some showers, clouds, and thunderstorms associated with that. Should move into the northwest Bahamas by tomorrow morning and then push towards, towards the central and southeast Bahamas throughout the rest of the day. But we are seeing that high pressure system that was dominating our weather pull out towards the east. Still keeping a bit of a breezy conditions across the southeast Bahamas, but that should fall off by tomorrow. Over the next couple of days, we are going to enjoy some nice weather as this frontal boundary clears our area. So by early next week, looking for some nice change in the temperatures as well. Boating forecast for the northwest and central Bahamas tonight through tomorrow. Your winds will be out of the south to southwest at 10 to 15 knots. They will fall light and variable ahead of that frontal boundary. Sea is running 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. High tide will be at 10.31 tonight. For the southeast Bahamas, that caution flag remains in place for you guys down here. Your winds will be east to southeast, becoming more southeasterly tomorrow, 15 to 20 knots. Your seas will be running 4 to 6 feet over the ocean. Here's a look now at your national forecast.
a look now at your extended forecast through Friday. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe night and have a great weekend, everybody. Back to you, Kyle. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Have a great weekend, everyone.